playing on a CE Wins. Um, this is one of our Studio Pro tenors. This is our Kansas City. It's completely unlacquered like that, you know, and it gives you, um, typically if you're playing like a regular mouthpiece on, it gives you more of like a complex spread sound to it, um, especially great for playing, um, you know, more jazzy, more avant-garde type stuff. It's not gonna have that laser, laser sound to it. Now, if you put a bright mouthpiece on it, you're still gonna be able to get some, some focus in your sound. Um, so this is the blank. This is the first one. I think this was a 101.5 or 100.5. The ligature wasn't big enough, so I got an extra reed under there <laughs> to make room to make it big enough. So um, really nice uh, uh, bronze mouthpieces, um, CNC made, and then we uh, have hand finished them from that point forward. So playing on a Regatti, I'm sorry, a Woodstone number three uh, tenor sax um, reed, Woodstone. I'm just going to play really basic stuff so you can hear the piece. <laughs> Place responds great, plays well. I'm going to play soft on it now. To me, a great mouthpiece can respond really easy, playing really soft in the low register. So I'm going to start out on low C. So you can see it's got that means the facing is really good here, back by the back where the facing starts. That's where you're mostly affected for your low end, is right here. So if you're having problems on your low end, not responding, um, your reed could not could be warped, so you could bring your ligature up a little bit for, more forward to help seal it right here. You want to make sure it's sealing right there, or your your mouthpiece table could not be completely flat, which happens at times. Um, some of the best mouthpieces that I played didn't have level tables, but your reed ultimately will will adhere and bend to that table. Um, it's just they're not those mouthpieces aren't going to be as reed friendly right away because they don't have a perfectly flat table. Anyway, there's the concave table guys and there's the flat table guys. I'm a whatever mouthpiece plays good guy. So if it plays good for you and you like it, then that's that's what you should play. So again, we were experimenting. We got a we got a Lenny Pickett model coming out soon. So on the way there, we've kind of picked out our masters that we're going to use for those pieces. But all these are great pieces as well. We just didn't need all these sizes <laughs> for it. Now this one, the ligature fits on good. So you don't have to worry about it. And there we go. So this one is a massive. I think this is like a 150 something. Okay, so it's a big tip. So again, you can see this res still responds as good. It responds well, it's just you might want a little bit of softer read on this one since it's like a 150. Again, ligature fits great on this one. This is a Robner, little Rob, little Robner, Robnet. softer on it. So again, I'm playing soft on it. It's a size 3 reed. It's a 155, I think it was. Let me check it again. Um, it's a 155 Berg style. So this is the 95. <laughs> Super easy to play, low notes. Well, actually, anything probably feels easy to play after you play a 155, so. <laughs> this is the 160, again, in Berg style.
apologize. I'm not used to doing Altissimo on a 160 tip, so that is really me. It's not the piece. Choke the goose, choke the goose, choke the goose. We're gonna get complaints here from PETA that they're choking geese up in the CE Wins shop there. We are not goose chokers. I encourage you on that. That was the 160. Now this is a 114.5. This has a longer bullet chamber on it and it's actually got a kind of a cool recess side here. Kind of a neat, neat look there. I pull, what this is doing on the body style, you're pulling out the material here so the ligature isn't hitting there and theoretically you're you're dampening the read less getting more vibration because we're talking about good vibrations yep didn't know i could sing did you he not only plays altissimo like a choking geese but he also sings like my drunk uncle at karaoke all right there we go again i don't know what size we'll look at the size again on this but again this is the bullet chamber it's a longer bullet chamber Play soft. Start out on low C. Play some great responding mouthpiece. That's more my size that I play, so I'm sure this is probably like a 110. Yep, this is a 114.5. So that's right under a size eight star. This is the 100. Again, it's the bullet style chamber. This is more of a longer bullet style, longer chain, longer baffle. Blah, 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 blah. This is more of a longer baffle. And this is, I think we said 100. Go. And I do not put on my mouthpiece the way your saxophone instructor probably told you to. Definitely the brighter so far. Um, I'm really, as I'm playing, I'm really having to lay off my armature to, to make it not as bright because if you really bite down on this thing. I mean, that's like, now this is a very diffused kind of spread sound horn. So the fact that that's that bright is, it's a, it's a very bright mouthpiece, but you can lay off it. Again, low notes. Uh, again, all these play, I'm playing them in a size three reach, so they all play good, they all play easy. Um, one, the 115, longer baffle. This is the 112. Now this one has some recessed sides cut into it. Again, it's, the idea is just trying to get um, less, the mouthpiece in less contact. This one has the, the, the bullet chamber, but a little bit more material was taken out here to kind of uh, give a little bit more of that rollover sound. It's not necessarily a rollover, it's kind of like a cutover. <laughs> um, if you wanted to, you could file that down a little bit more, roll it over a little bit more, but piece plays great as it is. And this one had, this one is, um, the, the beak styles are all a little bit different on them too, so make sure you look on the, uh, the, the pictures to see what beak style. You can hear the rollover, how it's, it kind of, it, rounds the sound out a little bit more. 
so they don't get really thin up high. That's a high F and it sounds nice and round. Don't imbalance. Got a lot of people. Now this is the one that's probably the most different. This one is actually has a very elongated beak, um, the recessed side, this is kind of like the more um, mainstream of the whole thing. Inside the baffle, this is more like your um, Michael Brecker one style. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a baby got a little bit more baffle length. Michael Brecker one baffle cuts around there. This is a little bit elongated a baffle, so it's gonna be a, maybe a tad brighter than a MB1. All these have straight medium chambers as well. So you're gonna get that nice focus there. Let's see what she does. And if this was a one thir one thirteen. <laughs> See? <laughs> 